Hey everyone, Kyle once again, and welcome back to the next um, movie review for Halloween month of October. And um, now I'm going to be reviewing a move, a film, a go more like a ghost story though, but um, it's a film that me and my brother saw back in 2007, which basically it's been 15 years now. And we both saw this in the theater. My brother, he thoroughly enjoys it. I like the movie too. But uh, it's from 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 the director, from this director, you know, if you know this director, this is a film that gets pretty much forgotten about, honestly. Nobody, nobody, nobody talks about this movie. And it's from, it's, it's a film that's been, it's directed by James Wong, and, and that is of Dead Silence. Now, Dead Silence was released in, back in 2007, and like I said, it's directed by James Wong, and, you know, direct, who directed, um... The first Saw film, and the same year in 2007, he did this film, and he also did uh, in the same year in 2007 he did a Death Sentence as well with uh, uh, Kevin Bacon and John Goodman, and also Kelly Preston. May she rest in peace. Now, um, I like Death Sentence because I like Kevin Bacon. I like John Goodman. Um, he, but he directed that film. I don't mind that movie. Of course, um, the Conjuring, the one and two, he directed. He didn't direct the. He didn't direct the third one. He only directed the first two. Um, Insidious, one and two, and then he directed Furious Seven, and then he directed Aquaman, and then he directed the film that I loved from last year, Malignant. I love Malignant. Malignant. That was my favorite film from last year. Like, but uh, Willie's w w Willie's Wonderland was very close second though. But Malignant. I, I thoroughly loved, and honestly, that's been, I think that I, I put that as James Wan's best movie, and I think now, because that film, I would say is very underrated nowadays, Malignant, because it didn't do sh shit the box office last year, which this film didn't do either, but, um, I love Malignant, I thought it was, I thought it was very, uh, you, in this day and age, it's hard for you to say unique, or refreshing, or maybe in hard to even say original nowadays, um, I like the how James Wan's like how his style was, you know, with the with the lot of different camera angles, um, the twist I didn't see the twist I did not see coming, um, a lot of badassery from the from the villain of Malignant, uh, Gabriel, you could say, especially in the in the police station that was just full on John Wick, you know. I love Malignant, and I mean that was that was James Wan's best movie, and at the same time underrated as well. But when it comes, but when it comes, when it comes to this movie though, this is pretty, pretty, pretty much people, people, people pretty, pretty much forget forgot about this movie. And like I said, this film did not do jack squat of the box office. It made like twenty two million worldwide on a budget of twenty million, so it didn't do dilly squat. Um, since the, and because they and, and and since the since the poor uh, due to the poor performance, they canceled a sequel. So no 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 sequel since the they were planning on doing a sequel uh, but since the, like I said so poorly they just cut it out completely and but and also the thing is though not only to the not only did not only boxes and critical wise though um it should, the uh, later uh, like after uh, like later afterwards um. Director James Wan and Lee Winnell, who also wrote the movie as who also uh, wrote the movie as well, uh, which of course Lee Winnell worked with James Wan constantly and pretty much everything he's done, you know. Uh, of course, Lee Winnell also played Adam in the first Saw film, and which he also played one of the teachers in Cooties, but um, he was always been a collaborator with uh, James Wong. And Lee Winnell also directed the, Invi the 20 2020 Invisible Man movie. And he also did Upgrade, though, but which I did not like. I did not like Upgrade, especially the ending. Uh, to me, we Lee Winnell, he did much better when he did The Invisible Man. But um, but just Upgrade, just uh, that was just... Uh, I hated that ending, so... But both of them, James Wan and Lee Winnell, they will later on will say they both they did not they hated this movie, they hated working on this movie. Because I think that they on their blog that was like um, deleted, but um, they said that that like 
they were fighting with a studio, I think it was for like a script doctor or something like that, and was fighting with, you know, they all wanted this, wanted that, you know, and just, they, they both, they say they just both hated, hated uh, working on this movie, they just hated the movie instead, it's like, they say it's their worst movie to make, which I'm sorry, I completely disagree on that, to me, which for, for director James Wan, I'm sorry, Aquaman, I hated and Fury Seven, it was if it wasn't for the the little trip, the nice tribute to Paul Walker at the end of Fury Seven, I would pretty much say I did not like Fury Seven. But thing is though, the ending, yeah, I know there were all the changes because due to Paul Walker's death, I know. But it was a nice, it was nice touching tribute when they paid to to Paul Walker at the end of Fury Seven though. But. I wasn't, but I was not overly big on Fury Seven overall, though. So, to me, yeah, Fury Seven and Aquaman, especially Aquaman, that's those are two of those are the two weakest movies from James Wan. But I will say this though, I what I mentioned about Malignant though, when it comes to action, because I think I said James Wan should stick to being a horror director, not action director. That's not his comfort zone. But I did say that when I reviewed Malignant, that, that he did kind of learn to pick up a few things from working on Fury 7 and, and Aquaman because the action sequences in Malignant, they worked very well, especially in the police station scene. So I guess he, he kind of learned those few tips, I guess, though. But still, James Wan, Lee Winnell, I'm sorry, Aquaman, which I know that Lee Winnell had a cameo appearance in Aquaman, but he didn't make the movie, though, but... Aquaman is, uh, I would say, it's his wor is James Wan's worst film, and then followed by Fury 7. James Wan is, is better off as a horror director, not an action director. So I'm sorry, uh, James Wan and Lee Winnell. I know you have your own opinion on how you feel about this movie, though, but to me, I I like the movie. Even my brother, he enjoyed the movie. We both saw, we both saw this in the theater because we were interested in it. So To me... You to you guys, I'm sorry that uh, I prefer more. I prefer I rather watch this than Aquaman or Furious Seven. And but uh, um, all that aside, now now getting to what it's about. The story goes that um, it falls um. <sighs> Our lead guy, a name played by, by, by uh, Ryan Qu Quantin, which the guy, uh, the only name, I, uh, the guy I remember for him from, which he will later be do the voice in Legends of the Guardians, the Owls of Gohul. He plays um, Clud, our main character Soren, his brother, which he basically just been turned to the dark side. Basically, Clud. He voices Clud in Legends of the Guardians, the Owls of Gohul, but um. And it was uh, open. It opens up with a good. Uh, one thing I, I like about the film is the score by Charlie Closer, which is also a collaborator with J director James Wan for his movies as well. I uh, the score in this by Charlie Closer was uh, was good, especially the opening uh, when during the during the credits when it shows of Mary Shaw making the puppet right with the book and all that. Uh, the opening the opening song for the during the credits uh, that was a good uh, piece of score by uh, Charlie Closer. But um, with our lead guy though, um, he he's with his wife, which he doesn't he does not know though. We find out that he didn't know that she was pregnant. But um, they get he gets a package, which doesn't know where it came from, and it contain it's a case that contains a ventriloquist dummy, and the design of the dummy for the dummy named Billy. They had, to, they had to, like, basically... You know how the... Um, well, they, I probably didn't mention about the Goosebumps movie. Um... That the doll Slappy in that movie... They had to take some... I think they, I think they had to steal from, from this movie because... The Slappy in the Goosebumps movie looks like, almost exactly... Almost the same as the doll in this. Which I would say I probably like the design of this doll better though. I just wish, I just wish they used the, the like use like the slappy from 
um, from the TV show. That was always a much more creepier looking ventriloquist dummy of Slappy than the one we got in the 2015 Goosebumps movie. But, um, but as I was saying, um, they, cause they, they, they heard about the, since they got a ventriloquist dummy, they know of their sole poem, they say, which of course is of, of a local legend about a woman named Mary Shaw, right? And actually from, she was from the town of Ravensfair, which that's where our lead guy, by the name of Jamie, that's, that was his hometown. But, uh, more on that though, but, um, he leaves to go and get some dinner and she's by herself, and then all of a sudden, all, all the noise, music, kettle pot, all the noise all around her, all of a sudden, it goes completely silence, you know, like mute, and then walks in the bedroom to lift the sheet where she put the dummy was, and she gets tossed, and then dragged, then, basically, it's like this scene right here. And she dies. And when Jamie comes back, sees the blood, lifts the sheet again. God damn it. Like I said, there's never a single there's never a moment in a, a single video where I've yawned. It's coming out of such a bad habit, you know? I can never go do a single video without yawning. It's just just, just so annoying to me. But anyway, um, he lifts the sheet, finds her her dead wife with her mouth like, kind of looks like you know, ripped open, but it's not. It's like uh, what was there was a movie um, The Ring. You know how afterwards when the girl from the ring, the ring kills the person, you know their eyes like their mouths are, like wide open. Well, this one's like even their victims in here are much their mouths are like much wider open. So, um. And then, and then, and when after the, when the uh, the police question him, especially um the, the 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 officer, the detective played by Donnie Wahlberg, Donnie Wahlberg, who's the the brother of Mark Wahlberg, which he would also later appear in the Saw, some of the Saw sequels. Um, of course, the, the funny thing is he's always supposed to be some kind of like a comedic, um, like a little bit of comic relief because he has his electric razor that he always has with him. Like, a lot, most of the scenes that was shown with him, he just always, like, he's, like, shaving, you know, with his electric razor. Bzzz. And he, he, his, he suspects that he did it, which, um, which he, there's, there's no hard evidence that can prove that Jamie did it, though, but he suspects he did. So, he finds the doll, um, finds the case open, rips open, like, the little... Um, the claw thing of in the inside of the case and find that it's Mary Shaw from Raven's Fair. So he drives back all the way to his hometown where he was from, and it's a ghost town. Everything is run down. And what's another positive thing about it is like the atmospheric look of the movie. Just like this, I would say like the filter of the movie, like it's like gray or it, I was, it's not gray. It's more like it looks more like blue though. It's like more like I said, like Alien Resurrection was ever the filter of that movie was all brown, like it's shit. Which Alien Resurrection, Alien Resurrection was shit. So, so the filter was fitting for that movie. It looked brown, but here it looks. This film looks more like grayish blue, I would say. So it does have a nice atmosphere look to the movie. But yeah, this is, this film was a lot, a lot better than Alien Resurrection. I'll tell you that. But um. He drives, but say he drives to his hometown. It's a it's a complete ghost town now. And so he, he um first he, uh he goes um all right he he goes to the talk to the funeral um Henry Walker was the guy's name who runs the funeral home talk about the discussion about his wife and then he goes to see his father goes to see his father um which he's now remarried to a younger woman play, uh, uh, named Ella played by um. Amber Valida and his father is played by Bob Gunton or yeah Bob Gunton you know who Bob Gunton he was I've seen him in a lot of movies too he was in Broken Arrow and uh, mostly known playing as the warden from the Shawshank Redemption and Bob Gunton he's been a lot um, like Demolition Man he's been in several other movies as well so I, I, I like Bob, I like Bob Gunton 
Um, but he plays as his father. He's in a wheelchair. Um, like, they both had a little bit of bad history together. So he tries to talk to him. Things don't go that well. So... Which shows a, another a good look, good, some good looking shots from James Wan, as I were, at the nighttime where he's at a he's at a motel, right, and he's a, uh, like trying to sleep, and the dummy Billy is is sitting on, on a chair, and we have, and you have that uh, the sign outside that's like flashing red light, which that was also like it also malignant that was also a flashing red light too as well, so James Wan he does have some nice stylish direct directing the show, so it, like the doll is sitting on the chair. And then once again, everything is starting to like um, mute out, right? Like the, the like the sound of the sign, like when it starts buzzing and then it starts blowing, bzz, bzz, like that. Even the, the the drops of water as well. Everything, and then you see like the 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 dolls the doll's eyes slow slow slowly move in, and then the head is facing it. And then he see he sees like the ghost of Mary Shaw for a brief moment. Um, and then the next the next day that um, uh, Donnie Wahlberg he's there he fo he followed him because he's a suspect so. And so after he buried his after he buried his wife, um, she sees um Mary Shaw's grave. And all the other like, um, cause he, cause he also went there to bury, the, to bury the doll as well, the Billy doll, and he's seeing all the graves of the dolls, cause um, M Mary Shaw had, like as as the, as the story goes, you know, like beware the stare of Mary Shaw, she had no children, only dolls, so she called named her dolls her children, so, so he was, so he went, so he went to, so he went to bury um that doll, but the thing is it came back though, and that's when Mark, uh, say Mark. Donnie Wahlberg was there. Um, and then um, he go he goes uh like he uh, talks about um, goes talk to Henry about the the pictures because his wife had brought his wife there before to bury her right, so he had to take pictures right and then he tells of the story of Mary Shaw back when, back when Harry when he was a boy back in the old days, and there was his old uh, there was um there was a theater on this lake, and everyone will go to and. Mary Shaw, who was a very a ventriloquist, and of course there was this some punk kid in the audience that say, "Oh, I can see your lips moving," in which that turns out that kid is actually a long a long lost relative of of um, Jamie. I say it was I think it was his great uncle, but uh, since because of that uh, sometime later the boy ends up missing. And people suspect that Mary Shaw, she's the the logical suspect because probably because of what happened, and she was murdered afterwards. And again, the funny thing is, uh, like her will say that she'd be buried along with her dolls, but also that um, and her will also say that she also not only to be buried with her dolls, but she also wants to become a doll herself. So back when a young Henry. After that, he goes back down to the, to the mortuary part where he lived, and he's looking in the casket. It falls down, and sees her, like you know, like looking like a doll, and then he backs up. He sees she's up and about, you know, going towards it, but then he covers his mouth, right, because he remember he can't scream. Oh, I shall rip your tongue out, and that's how things. When you, and also funny things when you rip when when she rips out uh, people's tongues, she st steals their voices. You know, it's like. Ventriloquism, you steal, you make voices, right? So, steal their tongue, rip their tongues out, steal their voices, you know, like a ventriloquism. You know, in ventriloquism, you mimic voices, so that's why she, you know, she, um, you know, takes their voices, right? Rips their tongues out and steals their voice. And, and then after he goes, to, and then he goes to, um, he goes to the old band theater. Look, looking around, finds that old book about you know, the making the making the puppets and shows like make the perfect making to make the perfect doll basically, and then he um, goes back, talks with his father again, saying that um, Mary Shaw was actually turns out Mary Shaw actually did uh, kill that kid, his great uncle, and um, members of the Ashton family and some other people as well, they. Uh, killed her 
cut her tongue out when she screamed. And since then, that's when the town has been plagued by death ever since, you know. And, like, everyone who was involved in her murder, they all died with their tongues ripped out, including all of every members, every single mo members of the family, including children and everyone else down the line, you know. And... And that's why, and that's why, um, uh, Jamie's dad, Bum Gun Bob Gunton, he sent him away, you know, because he w didn't want him to deal with all this, uh, the curse of, of from this place, you know, and what his family, the family, and other people have done, you know. So that's why he sent him away, even in, it caused him to hate him. So Donnie Wahlberg returns, saying that um, he he dug up all the gra the dolls' graves, and they're all gone. So uh, then he receives then he receives a phone call that it's from. Henry saying I can prove you didn't do it so tells him to meet at the old theater and I like the the, the design of the theater the, the production design you know give it the old rundown theater look some nice set pieces so they go to the theater they as they walk in they're walking behind the walls and they find one thing leading to another they both find the um the whole a whole wall of the cases of the, all the dolls are there and they find um the remaining body of Michael Ashton, you know, the boy that went missing long ago, and it turns out he's been he's been turned into a doll, and you know, as what um the a line from Mary Shaw saying, you know, um, um make a perfect doll, you have to use some some existing parts. So yeah, it turns out he did kidnap and kill that boy. It made him to a doll, basically, and you see that the face has been decaying for a long time. And then there's, and then there's this clown doll that Marishaw speaks through. And it's funny thing as they're walking, like down here, we walk. Is it like this is the movie screen, right? And like down here as they're walking, you see you see the puppet of Billy the puppet from the Saw movies. Because that's the thing. That's why this pup the. This puppet here is named Billy because named after the Billy the puppet from the Saw movies, which you do see that puppet like sitting down here. Like this is your movie screen, right? They're walking uh, this way, and sitting on the floor is the Saw puppet. Of course, because it's directed by James Wan. So, um, Mary Shaw is telling that uh, telling Michael about. Uh, he's telling Jamie is to the white how um so that. Why did you kill? Uh, not only uh, killing um, Michael Ashton for what happened, though, but he's also she's also killing everyone who who was involved to help silence her, killed her, you know. So that's why everyone would die because everyone who was involved, and including their families and everyone down their line, you know. And he's asking why did he kill his wife? Because when he got closer, he's saying, "You are not the last Ashton," because he told her that uh, she was pregnant. That the last action is inside of her, so it means he didn't know that she was pregnant with his kid. So that's why um, she killed her because she was carrying the last line of the Ashton family. So um, Donnie Wahlberg uh, and he gets a nice uh, gunfight where Donnie, Wah Donnie Wahlberg as he shoots a few shoots a few of the puppets with that Mary Shaw is possessing. Like, a lot of the puppets were nice, good, practical puppets until the part where their faces, like, stretch out because Mary Shaw is possessing them. That's some CG enhancements, yeah, of course. But it wasn't that bad CG. But, um, Donnie Wahlberg, he's shooting some puppets, and then, um, then, uh, uh Ryan Quanton, he sets the, the whole thing on fire. And as they're walking on this, ca they're, as they get on this catwalk, like Mary Shaw like unscrews the catwalk and Donnie Wahlberg he falls down since he screamed as he was falling. Mary Shaw grabs him and just rips out his tongue, and then he as when he when he lands to the ground, then his electric shaver his electric razor uh turns on. I'm like yeah him and his him with his electric razor fetish. Even in death, even in death with his freaking electric razor. But then, um, but then uh, Jimmy falls. B B covers his mouth though, and then he falls to the floor and he escapes through the water, underwater passage. And he remembers that there's one puppet left, and that's Billy. So he drives back to the 
first he drives back to the funeral house, the funeral home, finds that Henry's dead, which is quite funny that dumb because he gets killed by Mary Shaw because he's because he screamed, which is funny that you know back when he was a kid he had the smarts to uh, cover his mouth right, but here I guess he gets he just he knows about Mary Shaw but no one speaks of her name right but. Thing is, though, he knew about the whole thing, not screaming, but he still screamed anyway. And then ends, then she ends up stealing his voice to use that voice to make the phone call to lure, disguising as Henry's voice, and then make Jamie go to the theater. So he find Jamie finds him dead, goes back to his dad's place, finds um the doll, Mary Shaw's about to you know ah. Then he tosses the doll in the fireplace, and she disappears, thinking that's the end of it. And then he sees his dad, though, but now he, but he's not moving. So he touches him. He leans forward like this, and it, which turns out that his dad was a puppet. Bob Gunton was a puppet the whole time. And he ever get like a nice effect? How it shows how the back his backside has been hollowed out with a stick in it. You know, over to the. You know, how you control a puppet with a stick, you know? Nice good effect of how it shows how his back has been hollowed out for that. Because it turns out that his new stepmom, Ella, she was... Po Mary Shaw has possessed her, and she's the perfect doll. She's the perfect doll. She's the one who's been doing the ventriloquism voice, like the f impersonating Henry on the phone and working... Um... His, his dad, you know, because using the staff to work him as a puppet, right? So. So, um. Then she sees him. She's seeing that now she's not possessed by Mary Shaw. And then he goes and screams, no! And then he dies and gets his tongue ripped out. And then it ends with the both with him, his wife, his dad, Henry, and, um. Donnie Wahlberg, um, all are now dummies in this case, and it ends with him saying the poem again, and then Mary Shaw closed the book, so. But, um, Dead Silence, I, I, I like the movie. My brother, he enjoys the movie. As for nitpicks, I don't think there was hardly much. I mean, the film goes on a well. Uh, it goes really well paced. I mean, it's on for what um, an hour and a half, basically, but without end credits. But it goes out very well paced. I don't think it was not that boring as people make it out to be. I think people that people have problems with the movie because it's boring and nothing much happens. Nothing uh, goes on. I mean, I don't, I don't think it wasn't that boring. I never thought it was boring. People may think it's oh nothing much nothing much happens nothing's going on right, and also it wasn't that it wasn't that gory. I mean you saw just the just basically the gory things was the open mouths and that was it. I mean the, you know, this is not a uh, blood and all blood and guts movie though, but it wasn't. It was just like more of a simple ghost story with just some gore with the with just the open mouths and that's it right. Like there's like no limbs being ripped off or whatever you know. The goriest thing was this is just the open mouths. So, so there's probably some people who have problems have with the film, but it's not all that too gory, and um, probably not much happens. But I don't know. I just, I, I enjoy. Uh, but I, I like the movie though. But like I said, my brother he enjoys it. We both saw this in the theater before he didn't get pulled from theaters. Um. This, um, the score by Charlie Clouser I enjoyed. Especially when it played during the, the op, op, open credits. And I'm sorry, Lee Waddell and James Wan. I think, I'm sorry, you may think this the, you, you hate this movie, you think it's the worst movie you worked on. I disagree. I like the movie. I think it's a lot better than Aquaman, a lot more than um, Furious 7. And then the, 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 the cast that... Um, the cast, I thought, they, I thought they did pretty fine. I mean, Rob, uh, Ryan uh, Quantin, I thought he did was fine as Jamie. Um, nice to see Bob Gunton in there. I like him as an actor as well. Donnie Wahlberg with the whole thing with his with his freaking um, fetish with his electric razor. But overall, I like I like Donnie Wahlberg. Um, 
Amber Val Valletta. She was there, I guess. But the film had some nice atmosphere look to the movie. Like I said, with this grayish blue filter. I thought it was nice. I mean, I thought was, I like the atmospheric look to the movie. Like, just how the, the town place is a ghost town. And the, this, the ghost story is pretty simple, you know. And I thought, like, how just, you know, when Mary, every time Mary Shaw kills somebody, he takes, not only ripping their tongues out, but stealing their voices as well. And then, like, some of the production design, the production design, like I said, like, the town is made into a ghost town after for a long time, and the set pieces are at the theater, you know? And, um... You know, Donnie Wahlberg sh uh, shooting some dolls. I mean, probably wish that she would shoot, he would... Even though this is Mary Shaw, Mary Shaw is more of a spirit, a, go a ghost, though, but, hey, at least try, try to have Donnie Wahlberg try to shoot, the, shoot Mary Shaw for her once. We see him shoot some possessed, some of the possessed dolls before setting him on fire, though. But, but I like Donnie Wahlberg, you know, and but other than his fetish with the electric razor, but I like him. But um, yeah, so at least some some of the production design, the the atmosphere, look of the movie, the score by Charlie Closer, the acting. I don't think it's not that bad of a movie. I think it's, it's I don't think it wasn't that boring. I think it was a well paced movie as well. I just never thought it was boring. I'm sorry, Lee Winnell and James Wan. I don't think this is not the worst the the you got the worst movie you guys uh, worked on. Like I said, I really like this more than a hell lot more than Aquaman or Furious Seven. So, Dead Silence, I thoroughly well, I didn't thoroughly enjoy it. I just like I just like the movie. I like how the way the premise and the the look of the movie and everything else. But I, but my brother, he enjoys the movie. He definitely does enjoy the movie. It was too bad, that, you know. Like I said, for I said it got it got trashed on by critics and box office. They canceled the sequel and, and I, like I said before, James Wan and Lee Winnell. This is not this is not the, to me. It's not the worst movie you guys have done or worked with. I mean, Lee Winnell. I like The Invisible Man. I just did not like Upgrade, especially the ending. But James Wan. Malignant was your best one, and um, this film, Dead Silence, was not, I don't think it's not as bad as you guys made it out to be. Yeah, I'm sure you had problems while making the movie, though, but I'll, overall, I don't think it was this never, it was never this bad of a movie. I guess it was, I guess it was to, be, to them, it was that bad, because this film was pretty much forgotten about for 15 years now. So yeah, so basically this is the 15th anniversary, because, you know, 20, 2007, 2022, so 15 years. So, but me and my brother, we both like Dead Silence. Sorry, but um, but anyway, that's my review for, for on Dead Silence. I like the movie still. It's like I said, look, atmosphere, acting, uh, some ideas with the ghost, you know, with Mary Shaw, the poem, and yeah, though it's not very gory though. Been it, nothing much happens like more in the middle though. But I like some, like I said, some nice, good looking shots, you know, especially. You know, like like in the likes of the motel, the flashing red light, and the puppet slowly moving its eye and its head. You know, like those, those like those shots, like those I liked. Like I said some of it, James Wan picked up and uh, things I I thoroughly enjoyed in *Malignant*. But anyway, that's my review for *Dead Silence*. I like it, and my brother likes it. But in the score, like I said the *Child by Charlie Closer* was good, was really good. And once again, James Wan, Lee Winnell, it's not that bad of a movie. It's not. But anyway, thanks for watching. Stay tuned for the next movie review, and we'll see you next time. Later.